Welcome to the season finale of the Garden Report. The Celtics fall 88-80, to lose in six to the New York Knicks in the first round. This is the Garden Report on Celtics Blog and CLNS Radio. Let's get right into the highlights here. Carmelo Anthony all smiles before the game. But the big guys in everyone's mind, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, let's see what happened tonight. Prigioni raining threes in the first quarter. Hits that one. We have on the break an alley-oop to Tyson Chandler. And then another three from Prigioni. How big was his he was, at the beginning? I mean, he, he, he was on fire from the start. And I thought him and Shumper, those are the two guys that were the, the X factors in this series, in this game. Yeah. Another X factor is the Celtics going absolutely freezing ice cold. Ugh. 20 below Kelvin in the first half. <laughs> they scored 10 points in the first quarter, 17 in the second so quarter. so ugly. And then things were terrible. Whatever. We're not even showing you the third quarter. All you're getting is a Shump three here to make it a 20-point game. But a uh, big reason why this game got fun at the end, Jeff Green gets the rebound, goes coast to coast, takes off from almost a free throw line on this one. It's a beautiful up and under here. And, and this then is he the comeback. The here. This is the big comeback here, down 26 points, and all of a sudden you look up and it's a four-point game. And it's just insane that it got to that point. Well, there's a 20 to nothing run here. You see Felton. Gets uh, tries to take the charge, but it's a blocking foul, and Pierce hits that beautiful floating yeah. kind of desperation circus shot. But as you can see here, Felton switch position Takes at the Felton last second as there. a bonus there. Yeah, so there's everyone's favorite guy in Boston right now. <laughs> Finally, he's quiet. But Avery Bradley was some redemption. He had three steals during that twenty to nothing uh, run. And, and that's what they needed from him all series, and unfortunately, he, he gave it to them just in that run there. And four point game, Mello hits a dagger, and then the three. And this is it. Sign of a superstar. I mean, he had a terribly, terrible shooting game. I mean, he didn't hit a three-pointer for three games practically. And then he hits that dagger right there. And J.R. Smith finally uh, gets gets some uh, revenge on Boston. Pierce. Paul Pierce goes out. Possibly it, It's kind of quiet time. when he went out there. Not a ton of people notice it. But it could be the last time he checks out. But when KG checked out, everybody got on their feet. It was, it was the big moment of the night. He had a big hug for Doc. Let's talk about this game. They fall 88 to 80. Jimmy, they almost pull off the biggest comeback in NBA history, down 26 at one point, and they make a 20 to nothing run to make it a close game. Just talk about that run there at the end. I think it kind of sums up what this team's all about. I mean, just when you expect one thing, they do another thing. Yeah. And, you know, you can talk about how everyone thought that maybe they'd win tonight and they lost, but. They were down 26 points in the fourth quarter, and I already had my entire game story written. <laughs> Didn't and I was just ready to hit send, and all of a sudden, 5 0 run, 10 nothing run, 15 nothing. I mean, are you, I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, delete, 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 delete. Here's <laughs> this, all, here, you know, of course, oh, here, you know, we're going to have game seven. They hit it to four points. It's a very winnable game at that point because it was yeah. like four points. It was six points, and it was four points with like three minutes left in the game. I mean, anybody could have won the game at that point you when you think about how, how quickly the Knicks collapsed. Um, you know, I think it really says a lot about this team this year that, um, you know, just when you think that they're down, you know, they find it somewhere within them to, you know, make a comeback. You know, they dig deep. And when you have guys like KG and Paul Pierce leading the way, you really shouldn't be surprised that, you know, they go down swinging. Yeah, and let me go in another direction. It's not only everything you know about the Celtics, it's also everything you know about the Knicks. Yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> what, what the Knicks too. did to score zero points in that stretch was it was <laughs> hero ball offense. It was mm -hmm. Carmelo forcing jump shots. It was J.R. Smith forcing jump shots. I mean, they missed a million looks that weren't yeah. good looks. They were rushed. They were frustrated. They were trying to force things, and it didn't work. They were playing the clock, I think, too. Yeah, and it really makes you wonder about how viable this team is going forward to the next round. I was talking to Brendan Jackson earlier, and we were like, we really don't want to see the Knicks beat the Heat and win the Eastern Conference because we don't want anybody to go out of this, these playoffs thinking that Hero Ball wins out and that, you know, this is how you win championships. Because this is not how you win championships. With guys like Melo and J.R. Smith just heaving jump shots. Right. And, and, and that's, why just, they won't, that's why they won't beat the Heat. I'm not, I don't think Yeah, I mean, I guess none of us think that. But it's just, it's just saying that, like, this is not how teams win championships is with guys forcing jumpers. And it's kind of frustrating for the Celtics, which who are an entirely different kind of team. They have an entirely different kind of system. Right to lose to this Knicks team. It just, it's an added layer of frustration for a Celtics right. team that's got right. a lot of that already. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's take a look at the game reset here. Uh, you're looking at the numbers for the entire game, but just looking at the fourth quarter here, Carmelo Anthony goes two for nine in the fourth quarter, yeah. while Jeff Green and Avery Bradley both have 10 points. And those were the two guys that really kick-started that run there. You had all those steals by uh, Bradley. Bradley had three steals there, yeah. and he got and he was able to actually go coast-to-coast coast with coast those coast, steals. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then Jeff Green was doing those layups where he takes off from 
like pretty much the, the foul line. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes it's a good shot. Sometimes he th- kind of just like throws it up wildly. And the last one, of course, was when uh, Chandler took that charge. He threw it up mm-hmm. wildly. That ended the run right there, Evans. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the Celtics were going to go down swinging. And there was a certain point in that game where they realized that Jeff Green charging to the basket was their best offense. And they went with it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. their best offense before that was Paul Pierce just iso Paul Posting up time. people from all over the Yeah, <laughs> yeah Paul, it yeah. didn't work too well. And, you know, more turnovers and buckets. So. <laughs> and Avery Bradley, he was a huge part of that comeback. And yeah. honestly, it took him six games and three quarters to show up. I mean, yeah. he really had a really rough. Hey, at least he <laughs> showed up for one quarter. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I, and, and I like Avery Bradley, and I think he's a great defender. But offensively, he was a, a liability for this entire postseason. Absolutely. And he got benched for Terrence Williams in the last Right. Season. And he <laughs> lost yeah. minutes to Terrence Williams, the guy that you know was brought in a month or two ago you know, off the boat from China. Bradley still has a lot to work on offensively, but when you can get a seal and get open court, right. anybody can make layups. And, and he right. gave himself layups because he was so energetic defense, and so yeah. tenacious on defense that he made plays. For the record, Avery Bradley did miss a few layups in the series, so it's not he guaranteed. Does do that. Right. But he did perform very well in the fourth quarter offensively, Absolutely. and that was pretty huge. Yeah. And it just goes to show that if, if I mean, it's just the difference in the series was maybe one guy like Avery Bradley or or uh, you know, a Courtney Lee. You know, if one of those guys could have stepped up. Or Rajon Rondo, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of those guys could have stepped up. I mean, Jason Terry stepped up to an extent, and if there was somebody else who stepped up their game, like Terry, uh, I think that you know we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, the last show. Of the That's year. true. <laughs> but you know, Terry only took six shots. Five of those were threes. I mean, he didn't. Three went in, right? He didn't yeah. take that. It's true. No, he he did. But he didn't take nearly as many shots as he did in the previous game. In no. the previous game, he was able to carry them offensively in the fourth quarter because they were getting him a lot of good looks. Right. And tonight, they really, they really weren't able to make him a part of the offense. It felt like he was just kind of getting scraps when they would come up for the most right. part. And I think that's fine for that to be his role. I mean, he's yeah. not forcing things. He's just getting it within the flow of the offense. He loves to. He's open in transition with a good look. He'll take it. If there's a good ball movement and he's wide open in the corner, he'll take that. But he doesn't need to force things to get his shot. That's not his game anymore. No, and his... You know, the last four games of the postseason, he went 12 of 23 from three-point range. So, I mean, that's the type of player. I mean, obviously, those numbers you can't expect over the course of the season. But when they signed him over the offseason, that was what they wanted, a guy that could replace Ray Allen's three-point shooting and maybe add a little more. You know, with the ball in his hands. They wanted a guy who would step really up in the playoffs. That. And guess what Jason yeah, Terry he did. did? He stepped up in the playoffs. He did step up they in were the right. Playoffs. Yeah, he did step up in the playoffs. Well, he did say after the game he wants to get back to six men of the year form. So we'll see if he Good luck with that. that but um, still, nice job. Yeah, but let's, <laughs> let's hear what uh, everyone had to say after the game about this one. When our guys uh, told him after the game, I couldn't be more proud of a group of guys who went through a ton of adversity all year with all the injuries and all the stuff. Um, and they just never didn't think that they could. Um, you know, Kevin, who limped into the playoffs and then played, um, I mean, he was unbelievable. He's a, a tough of a guy, a tough of a of competitor that I've ever been around. Um, you know, rebounding and just doing everything for this team. Um, didn't, I, I really didn't want him to go out that way on our court. I mean, I, I, I just didn't want it. It, it. You know, obviously we lost to a better team, but for him uh, in particular, um, I just didn't want him to go out that way. But uh, he is a winner. Uh, he's the best, best that I've seen. Well, again, I mean, first I got to tip my hat to, to Doc and his crew and the great fans here in Boston because they – that 10-minute mark, boy, they – they made a hell of a run, but again, I tip my hat to my guys in that locker room because they stood up and they made the big plays that they needed to make to secure the win. I think Iman Steele and Mellow's three at the end were two of the biggest plays coming down the home stretch. So, total team effort though, on our part. Oh, we had a shot. You know, we had a uh, lead down about four for like two or three minutes to go, which is plenty of uh, time, you know, but sometimes it didn't go your way. I think we fouled Carmelo. We turned the ball over. They got a, a rebound, a offensive rebound. So, when, you know, you're trying to make a comeback uh, that before, that size. Uh, you know, everything has to be kind of perfect for you. Uh, it was nearly perfect for us, but we just ended up short. So obviously the problem was that they shot, or they scored 27 points in the first half. They put themselves in that hole because That's That's basically going to Paul Pierce for ISO plays for 40 minutes isn't really going to work for you. So 
I mean, this season, they kind of had some different things going for them. They had the running game going, like we saw, which led to the 20 nothing run. They were running pick and roll with Paul Pierce. See, I was going to mention pick and roll. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> this team's offense changed drastically in this series compared to what it was doing earlier in the year, Evans. Yeah, and that's what I already said last show, is that they haven't found their identity. And, you know, this is game 87 of the season, regular season playoffs included. Mm. And they still, after 87 games, never quite found out who they were. You know, they lost Rondo midway through the season. They had to redefine who they were. They had one stretch of, you know, the first two weeks without Rondo where they had, you know, a ball movement themed offense that worked well. And they kind of devolved into something else and then changed into something else. And it was just, they never really found who they were. And I think they all admitted at the end that they didn't quite have enough. They just, they didn't have enough guys capable of creating shots. They didn't have enough firepower to get past a team like the Knicks. And it's just, you know, without Rondo, without Sollinger, without their youth, it just, it just wasn't enough. And they, they, they admitted that in the end. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I think that's when they found out what they were, was yeah. that they were not good enough. They're a seven be, seed that loses to a two seed. Right. It, and it happens. At the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, they were undermanned. They didn't have enough depth on the bench. Yeah. Um, Doc was trying to pull something out of anybody on the bench that wouldn't give him anything. I mean, he went to Terrence Williams. He went to Courtney Lee. I mean, he stayed away from uh, the big guys like Wilcox, Randolph, and, and White. Those guys didn't really see any time. Um, but they, they're a team that you know, missing Rondo came back. Finally, came back to bite them. You know, the honeymoon was over. You know, it, it got to the point. Everyone said that that was going to happen when the playoffs come. They're going to miss Rondo. They needed a point guard. You know, they were out there like chickens without heads a lot of times on offense. And um, yeah, there was a lot of aimless running around. Right, there was sure. a lot of it. It's true. And, <laughs> you know, and, and they ultimately came back to bite them. Yeah. Okay. So they fought pretty hard and did pretty well against a pretty good Knicks team. Put Rondo in the mix there. This, can this team really make a title run the way that they played this year? Could they this year? Yeah. I mean, they could have. Oh, when you say title year. run, I, I mean, they weren't playing well with Rondo this year, so it's sure. tough to say that they would have just turned it on magically with him. Yeah. I mean, I think on paper, yeah, if you look at the guys on the team, add Rondo and Sellinger to the lineup, you would think that they would. They could beat the Knicks. Just they the way give, it transforms right, the way they, they play could, off. Right, they could beat the Knicks. They could give the Pacers a run, and they probably lose to the Heat like every other team. Would. Exactly. Oh, that's the thing. I mean, they could beat the Knicks and the Pacers, no problem. Mm -hmm. But you, you get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and it's the Heat, and it's game over. I right. mean, I, that's the reality of the whole league for the next five years. You know, right. it's it's it's, it's unless the Heat, health, and, unless something yeah with injuries. LeBron gets hit by a bus tomorrow. I'll change my mind. But other than <laughs> right. that, you know, that might and have a slight effect on the end. even then. Sure. If LeBron's hit by a bus, he'll be at a day. He's like Adrian Peterson will recover and run rush for twenty next year. Um, but, you know, this team next year, it's pretty unclear what that situation yeah. is going to be. The guys that you want to know about, Doc, KG, Paul Pierce, they sort of addressed it after the game? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that right now. I can't make that decision now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, on, I'm on the contract, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, honestly, I, I, I just can't uh, even think about that right now. Um, so I don't know. Like I said, that's, that's something uh, for Danny and them, I have no idea. But do you personally expect that you won't be playing next season? Well, I definitely expect to be playing next year. I haven't really thought about the conversation. You know, kind of digest me. I'm going to see the current. And uh, Doc came before, falling out to the side. And uh, we both, all three of us agreed to you know, speak later. It's pretty emotional. Obviously, it's a big game. Uh, it's a tough loss, especially at home. Uh, more important in the future. Evans Clinchy, what's up? This is the big question. Up, who's going to be who's going to be back next year? It's hard to say, but yeah. gun to Ooh. my head, if I got to guess, I, too late. No, I'm just <laughs> too late. Oh my god! I think they're all back next year. I, I think this is a stubborn group. Took me answer. We can have the same vision. <laughs> yeah. Look, I think, I, I no think that they're a stubborn group of guys. I think Kevin Garnett's got too much pride to walk away with two years left on his contract. I think Paul Pierce wants to stay around as long as Kevin does. I think that Doc loves this group of guys, including those two and Rondo, too. He wants to be back and coaching these. I think they're all going to be back. And okay. I mean, they said they're going to talk it over, but I think once that talk is done, they're, they're all going to be It's interesting to because last season it was all dependent on what Kevin Garnett decided on doing, but I think this year it all depends on what Danny Ainge wants to do. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, he has the power to, you know, not that he never did, but he has the power to buy out Pierce and blow up the entire thing. And he's hinted that that's on the table. And he's, and he's hinted that it, it's going to be a tough decision to sure. make. Well, um, whether everything's or not he, always on the table. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, whether he buys him, whether he wants to buy him out, whether he can flip him for a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, at this, you know, yeah, like Danny Ainge, you're the guy who 
brought in KG and brought in Ray Allen and won a championship, but you're also going to be the guy to trade or buy out, you know, the face of the franchise in a way. You know, it goes like Bill Russell, Larry Bird. I mean, Paul Pierce is right there with, with those guys now. I mean, maybe we don't see that now, but I think down the road, you'll yeah. you'll look at Paul Pierce as one of the, you know, well, he is one of the all-time greats, but you'll look at him differently once, once his career is completely over. So I think that's a huge decision that Ainge has to make. I just can't see... I can't see him doing it. I just, mm-hmm. I feel like that Pierce will be back. And I don't know, I don't have the, the NBA salary cap memorized in the back of my mind. I don't know the logistics of it all and the ramifications of keeping Pierce down the road. What does that mean for their cap restrictions, you know, in 2014 or 2015? But I just think that, you know, to give themselves the best chance of winning next year, you kind of have to just stick with the core guys and maybe bring in a couple extra pieces and hope for health. Well, they're basically limited to using the mid-level exception that they do keep all peers. So they could bring in a guy for $5 million or even two yeah. small no, guys Jason for Terry two type. million. Yeah. Exactly. Big guy, please. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that seems most likely that they would try to bring in a rim protector, someone that could anchor the but defense and give KG a break. If you know NBA economics, you know the big guys that protect the rim are not mid-level, mid-level exception guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kendrick Few Perkins makes $9 million, dollars, you know. But and, that's a but, funny hey, name. no one in the world knows why he might that get, that's, you know, It's an interesting name that you brought up, though, because... He's been in talks about getting in to Steve Kendrick Perkins. Sure. I mean, yeah. so is that a guy that Danny says, hey? Uh, I don't think Perk is a mid-level guy. I think that given the economics of this league and how valuable big guys are, I think he gets more money than, than whatever it is, $5 million. And I don't know. I don't see it. I would love to see it, but, but I, I don't see it. He's going to have a lot of money in his pocket if he gets in with Steve. Maybe he's, he's got a lot of money in his pocket Maybe he way. decides <laughs> to take a little discount and come back with his you know, his best friend Rondo and, and KG and the old get them all back together. Tony Allen's going to be a free agent and get <laughs> oh him God. back on the phone. Uh, he's looking for a big payday. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities, obviously. Eddie House is hanging out. For me, the bottom line <laughs> is we, we have no idea if KG's willing to just – do the intense amount of therapy that he has to do before and after every single game to be able just to we work the court. That's not really we don't know that, but I think that there's going to be a point this off season where Kevin and Paul and Danny basically talk about can we add to this team enough to actually make it worth that Paul mm-hmm. and Kevin come back in more of a reduced role. Are they going to be capable of competing for a title if those two right. are in a slightly reduced role where they're only needed for about 25 to 30 minutes in these big games? Well, you need another Jeff Green type where I think honestly, just, or you just need a Jeff Green type. Jeff Green, you could realistically. You know, Pierce is good enough to start, but I think that if you want to have a reduced role, maybe you start Green in his position and he comes off the bench for Green. Now, does he want to do that? I don't know. Does, yeah. he, does he want to come off the bench? I don't Would know. he come off the bench? Is it pride? I mean, it, uh, that's like you said, they're going to have to figure all that stuff out. I think that he, if, if Pierce was traded to another team, uh, it would probably be to a team that would maybe not maybe not start him. I don't know. It all depends on the team, I guess. Yeah. He I could, could start. I, I agree with all that. Let me say one more thing. There's all this talk about Doc sitting down with Kevin and Paul and discussing the future. One name we're not hearing is Rajon Rondo. Why isn't Rondo at that table having that conversation too? He's in Vegas. <laughs> but like this is his team as much as it is Kevin's or Paul's at this point. And like there's right. so much of the team, the future of this team is tied to what Rondo does. Like he should be at the table discussing this too. He's going to be back will. next Maybe year. Sure. And, and, when I say those like the older guys at the table, that's I, because Rondo isn't deciding whether or not. I'm not talking about retire. what you said. I'm talking about what Kevin Garnett said. Sure. I don't okay. care what you have to say, Jared. <laughs> Get out of here. Nobody does. <laughs> okay. Well, you should care what I have to say because I'm gonna give you my baller of the season. For all me, right. it's Paul Pierce. He's the baller of oh, the. Oh, by year the way, real me. quick, sure. I cut you off. Sure. Are we all in agreement that Doc Rivers is coming back? I mean, oh uh, yeah. yeah. Get out of here. Sure. I don't think that that's even sure. a topic. Yeah. yeah. Just wanted I, to make sure. I think even if Paul and KG were to retire, I, I still think that he's probably going to come back next year. Yeah. I'd say I'd say so too. He and Rondo have a bond. It's not going away anytime soon. I just think Doc. I mean, what's Doc going to do? I mean, his son's in the NBA. His other son's in in basketball. <laughs> we'll see for how long. D league. I mean, hey, he's maybe, go maybe Monty and, Williams gets like, fired and he wants to take over the Hornets. You never know. Doc Doc loves the NBA life. I mean, yeah, he, he could, does. Sure. He could retire and be an announcer if you really if that's what he really wants to do. But I think that he likes being a coach and, and having an influence on the young guys and definitely. Well, I, I love Doc as an announcer, so I wouldn't be upset if he became an announcer. <laughs> right, that's true. Okay, so baller of the season, Paul Pierce. Let's take a look at some of the big plays from tonight for him. But uh, for me, with Pierce, he just he carried the offense when the offense was dead. I mean, that was the big thing. Yeah. He played some. He did play some good defense this year. He but he became the assist guy when Rajon Rondo went down, and that was the big thing. Was those games where Rondo went down, Paul Pierce was getting like ten assists a game. Hit a couple of triple doubles. It was incredible. 
he did all the things that Doc has always said that he's willing to do for this team. Mm -hmm. And you really got to see it. And that just blew me away. And obviously KG, he fought so hard and did so much uh, this year. But Paul basically put the entire team on his back for the entire season after Rondo came out. And that was, or went out. And that was the big thing for me this season. For me, it's Garnett. I mean, the guy was such a constant all season. Like, you know, he's, he's almost 37 years old and he, he weathered so much abuse this season. And he only missed a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, there was so much going on around him with guys getting hurt, guys in and out of the lineup, but he was a constant. He kept fighting for this team all season. Um, you know, he got 17 rebounds a game in this playoff series. I mean, he did everything he could for this team. He fought so hard. He wanted this so badly. And, you know, just for the emotional leadership alone, he gets my baller of the year. Yeah, and he really went out. I mean, he went out with a double-double. I mean, like you said, 18 rebounds, 17 rebounds, 17 rebounds. I mean, he's a guy that he just consistently shows that if he wants to come back, he can. I mean, I know it takes him three hours before every game to get ready. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's worth it because what he really, he he really is productive. He's a exactly. That's, that's, that's why I think he's going to come back because it's like, what else is he going to do? Yeah. What yeah. else is he going to do? He loves tape and he loves roll pulls, so I'm sure right. he's, he's going to be back. No. Um, so, yeah, I think you guys are spot on. Pierce, Garnett. Um, I'll give a uh, honorary baller of the season to Jeff Green Definitely. because, I mean, just everything the guy's been through. I mean, obviously the heart, open heart surgery. I mean, that's just craziness. Getting the big contract. I mean, everybody was on this guy from the start before he even picked up a basketball because of all the money he got, mm -hmm. $36 million over four years. Yeah. Huge contract. And yeah. and I'm not saying that he lived up to it this year. I don't know if he's ever going to live up to that much money. I mean, I think he's worth $9 million this year. Well, and, yeah. I think that, and I, I think that if you divide the season in half, Yes, he, you know the second half of this year, he really. I mean, they I, they would be an eight seed if that without sure. Jeff. Green. That's the half. I'm he was a three million dollar guy and a fifteen million dollar guy, and those numbers average to nine. So it's <laughs> all good. Idea. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. And if they can get that guy next season for a full year, I mean, that's a guy that. I mean, that that, that that's that's a guy that you, you know with Rondo and him. I mean, that's a good one-two punch right there. Yeah. Not even considering KG and Pierce and and Terry. So I mean, if you can get Jeff Green. Uh, going at a, a 90 to 100 percent, which I know he wasn't for sure. the first half, and maybe you never even are into when this you come year. Back from like a come really back from something like that, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, the confidence that he has now in himself uh, and that his teammates have in him, I think that he uh, really stepped his game up into the playoffs from the yeah. second half on. After what he's been through, if he can play basketball at all, it's a victory. If he can yeah. play it this well, it's, it's, it's incredible. Right. I mean, it, yeah. And same thing for Chris Wilcox. That's not that's absolutely not the fact that Chris Wilcox. Oh yeah, is but, the same but thing. that but but I think and they and, and recovery wise, that's great for him because Wilcox. I think he came back. He came back even sooner than Green because he got the injury way later in the year. Yeah. But for Green to have the production that he had and Wilcox, you know, great guy, but he didn't have the nearly. You know, sure. It's not even in the in the conversation. He didn't really get the play at all. No, he no. played seven minutes in the postseason. But Green was a guy that they. We're constantly going to, and when you get Green in the open court, I mean, we saw how dangerous he is. You know, a big thing with Green is that for Celtics fans, he's like the hope. People every year are looking for a guy that they can say, this is the next big star for our team. Last year, Bradley was kind of that guy. Mm -hmm. This year, it was Jeff Green. Yeah. People are so, people want to see every single play that he has because right. they're, they think that he's going to start doing this consistently. And that's the key. He's word. getting there. That's the key word, consistency, yeah. and that's what they're going to be looking for more out of him next year is, you know, we need to see this on a day-in and day-out, game-in, game-out basis. But it's pretty clear he's a 20-point scorer. It's whether or not he's going to be able to score consistently enough to put up 20 a night or if right. it's going to be 14 a night. Mm -hmm. Sure. We will see. We'll find. You'll find out next time that we all see you here at the Garden. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the season finale, of course. Uh, I want to thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I love you guys. Love you yeah. too, man. I love you too, man. Thank you so much. We love you. Thanks for watching. It's been it's been really great. All the fans have been great at the Garden Report. Uh, we got a lot of support. Yeah, I get from stopped you guys in the street. Twitter. Like, oh my God. Yeah, people like, is that Jimmy Toscano? <laughs> I have to say, no, I'm Jared Weiss. I kind of look like Jimmy Toscano. They Tiscano, don't obviously. say that to you. Uh, but <laughs> just don't flatter yourself, Jared. Thank you to all our fans. Uh, you can find Both all of you. us on Twitter. We'll flash the. Uh, Twitter handles below here. You'll still hear from us over the off season. We're working on a few things uh, for you to hear from a us on things. the off season, especially some uh, blooper reels. So that'll be fun. Oh boy, we have bloopers! Yeah, I thought we were perfect. Oh no, no. Oh, no. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that we cut out of the show, and you're going to get to see oh, some. I forgot all about those things. So thank you to everyone that's listened and watched. You can of course find this podcast on the CLNS Radio iTunes feed. This show is on Celtics Blog and CLNS Radio for every single Celtics home game. So thank you to everybody at that network at CLNS Radio and at that website, nice. Celtics Blog. Thank you to everybody at SB Nation. Thanks for tuning in. Celtics, the season's over. They lose 88-80 to, to the Knicks, lose game six. We'll see you next year.